Hey, everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. We have got a killer for you. Jason LaRocca from Call of Duty to Fortnite, all kinds of movies and television and hit artists. You're going to learn a lot from a great and talented guy. But first, we want to congratulate the winners of the March Madness AKG headphone giveaway. Drum roll, please. They are Beth Carr from Canton, Ohio. Dylan Kurt from St. Louis, Missouri, and Katrina Napier from Mesa, Arizona. Congratulations and shout outs to our fabulous partners at JBL and AKG. Uh, wear them in good stuff and make great music. Another shout out that you need to know about uh, Dave Pensalo and our technical crew love baby audio. They love baby audio, and baby audio is going to love you back. And here's how. They're offering a discount code for 15% off of any of their products as long as you use the code Pensado. I'm telling you, forget me telling you, Dave is telling you, and our team is telling you, get baby audio stuff. So good stuff. Congratulations to the winners. Great discounts on baby audio. And now an even greater conversation with a phenomenal talent. Enjoy our discussion with Jason LaRocca. Jason, I got thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Oh man, um, it, it, it's so interesting to read up the, 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 the viability of all the things you do is nuts. Mixing recording artists is crazy, doing gaming and not just any gaming like Fortnite and call. I'm literally replaying Call of Duty Black Ops right now <laughs> just to get away from what i do for a living i'm like wait i'm not getting away from what i do for a living um <laughs> grammy nominations and so so but part of what i think is fascinating is because your history is rooted in punk sure right? you went out and did punk stuff and i i find that people with that disposition they don't look to play inside the rules Sure. They're going to find a way. Was that part of the underpinning of how you approached and got to this point? You know, it's it's really just it's rooted mostly just in enthusiasm of music, you know, and I think, you know, for me, it wasn't enough just to enjoy listening to music. But I, I, I enthralled myself in, in wanting to become a performer and actually go out and see the world as a performer and and just you know, understand music from every single angle that it possibly could. Punk was just kind of what, you know, I ended up, you know, doing because, you know, growing up in LA and, and, you know, gravitating toward, I was a skateboarder. So it was like, that it was just second nature, you know, yeah, Be getting into punk rock and that sort of thing. So it was just, it was just what was part of growing up and, you know, but everything was exciting to me. Film music was exciting to me too, though I didn't really know really much about it. I just knew that I liked it. But mm -hmm. it was like the culture growing up in LA was just, you know, it was like punk rock and playing shows was like the thing to do, you know? Mm -hmm. We didn't have iPhones yet, you know? Do you still have that video of you holding your kid like this and you're playing? Your I do. I was just reminiscing about that the other day, actually. <laughs> He, he stepped with a guitar pick and started picking the guitar with his little kid's head. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I, my my son, who was, I think he was four at the time, he was on the stage and he came up to me just like begging for me to hold him. But of course, I was in the middle of a guitar solo. So I actually managed to somehow not screw it up. I held him in one arm and uh, played the solo in the other arm. And, it, and the solo was good. Somebody caught, yeah. somebody caught it on tape. And then it, it, you know, they sent it to me. And of course, I posted it. It went viral. It was fantastic. It's a great that's, video. Of course, that's fun. <laughs> Imagine him looking back on that, man. That What a great... He, he thinks I'm a total dork, you know what I mean? So, like, <laughs> they all do. <laughs> Maybe in another ten years, you know, you're right, like, yeah. oh, amazing. Oh, well, I mean, if I if I if I lose a little weight, can we do it with me and you? Of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please let us know. We will <laughs> bring out a five camera shoot for that one <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, we always tell people that sometimes you don't know when your opportunities going to come. You just got to be ready. And and be, and the Mark Isham thing, I mean, the idea that a, a job opened up and you went audition and then 
I mean, you went for it and it wasn't time yet. So you just hung around and he eventually said, I like you and boom. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really the the pedigree for, for what he was looking for. You know what I mean? And, and my, my whole thing was like, I didn't know how I was going to get into a studio. I just knew I was going to figure it out one way or the other. And, you know, a lot of doors were closed. A lot of opportunities weren't there, but I had a friend who got me an interview with a film composer. And of course I knew nothing. I knew about film music, but I knew of course nothing about the production of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I met, um, Mark Isham, it was just like, you know, I, I, I don't really know much about what you do. I just know that, you know, as a sort of DIY kid who's built his own little home studio at his parents' house and records punk mm -hmm. bands, maybe there's some use you have for me here, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't know. And he thought, you know, yeah, I don't know if I have a use for you. And I just begged that I could just sort of hang around and help for a couple of weeks. And then eventually he was like, you're kind of cool. You just sort of show up enthusiastically and help and, and you're just don't care what it is, you know, that you have to do, whether it be, you know, picking up dog poo or something like that, you're, you're, you're down for the game. So he, he liked that. You know, and then of course that I was tenacious in, in, you know, trying to make some sort of studio job happen. And he gave me that opportunity. So Didn't that... any, any little opportunity for me was like, it, this could just be, you know, gone with the wind in two seconds. If I don't take it, you know, didn't, didn't we get, get to fab at the same time you were right before me oh. and I came so, and I noticed the speaker. I have the lights on my speakers, just the same as Dave. Look at Dave's. <laughs> okay, okay. So when I came, when I came to Fab Factory, and I and I met Dave, and I walked into his room, he had these beautiful lights going up in his beautiful Augsburger speakers. Yep. I thought, what a genius idea! What a way to showcase the best part of a mix room. So of course, uh, I stole yeah, the idea. I don't know if you can see in my ceiling. I've got. I've got going stuff going on my ceiling too. I love that. I love that. These the sort well, of like it also ties together two two different things. One is um the environment that you're in, being able to get inside the studio, which is how Dave and I met. We were trying to get inside the studios. You were getting inside the studio. And then when the job opportunity came up, you were ready for it. That's one component. The second component is and and ladies and germs, please pay attention to this. Mark liked Jason. Uh, people that Dave hires, Dave likes them. People that I hire, I like them. So if you don't know how to be that, it that's going to serve as a block for us to get to your skills or get a chance to teach you skills. So be likable. Be a good human being. Be be that way. A studio is a still a religious place to get into. Yeah, it's only true. for certain kind of people, and you got to respect it and be ready for it. Um, Jason and I happen to share office space in one way or the other at um, a facility called Fab Factory. And if you ever get a chance to come to Fab Factory, and I advise you do, it's set up for that place to be kind of spiritual and 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 inspiring and. It's got art and other things that keep you challenged and motivated and incredible art. And and so all that comes into play here when we when we we want you to understand that it's, it's such a specialized thing, it's such a privilege to do it. And then if you can find an environment to be in and be ready, then you'll get your shot. So you 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 want to be on your game, you want to line stuff up. And you're hearing also, if you take me out of it, take Dave and Jason, two people at the top of their game, they still find those attributes important. Absolutely. Environment, liking, being, you know, conducive to conversation, knowing how to listen, how to be in a room and not take up space. Mm -hmm. All that stuff is important. Is that correct? Oh, for sure. And I think, you know, you can second guess yourself out of any opportunity in any job. And I think anytime, you land something or you get something it's like you have that opportunity to simply step up whatever it is you're doing you aren't going to be ready for it you aren't going to be prepared for it you you know it's like we always make the joke that every project we ever do by the time we get to the end of it we're perfect at doing it you know mm -hmm. and so you're never really ready for it when you start it but it, it, it's it's what the whole 
game is about is that when you get that opportunity you aren't totally ready for it you got those nerves you got those butterflies in your stomach and you step up your game it's like you said it's a sacred place to be in a, in a studio to be in an environment like this uh you know any studio is, is super inspiring fab factory especially where where i've been for a while and where mm -hmm. i met if it's 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 like it does sort of put you in that mindset to elevate yourself mm -hmm. and get better at what you're doing and and kind of try and play at the top of your game and knowing too that you know in an environment like this there's other engineers in other rooms doing fantastic work and right. kids who are doing stuff on fl studio with you know a, a broken laptop and are killing the game and yeah. so at any level where you're at it's like you got to just know that you know the competition is fierce but in a good way you can look at that enthusiastically and go if i got myself in a door i'm just going to own this <laughs> you know what i mean absolutely in fact i'll, I'll give you a real life uh, example of what happened about three weeks ago at fab factory there's a male vocal group out of fort worth texas that happened to be in town to do some demos down in the hood um the guy i know who knows them came by brought them by my office they sang for me blew me away and then they were headed down to the studio but in the interim they were shooting basketball out in the in the open area of fab factory uh i had new addition in there rehearsing for their residency new addition came in and was parking so now these kids are seeing their heroes i mean they're 18 they're not kids they're 18 20 whatever the kid so they're saying, oh, my God, Ronnie DeVoe and Ricky and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Ronnie asked them to sing. They sang for Ronnie. He jumped out of his car. He went in and got the brass of New Edition. They came out. They sang for them. The brass from New Edition stopped New Edition's rehearsal, took them inside in front of the mirrors, and had them rehearse right there and said, we want you to do our Las Vegas residency we're yeah. blown away. You're like the new, new addition. Yeah. These kids' lives changed in about 20 minutes because of the environment. Wow. I have a tape of it. It is stunning to watch. It's stunning to watch new additions react. Now, you can imagine every male vocal group that's a kid has sung for them or sent a demo or whatever. And and I will say this, too. Their, their Svengali, Brooke Payne, who's legendary, he wouldn't i booked the room for them he wouldn't even allow me in the room where the mirrors were yeah like he, he runs it that way and for him to stop rehearsal put those kids in and tell them you have an opportunity to go be great and i want to talk to you about so i'm just saying sometimes when the opportunity comes up that's no different than mark Isham saying he likes you it's no different than dave and i meet the skip sailors and here we are <laughs> stuff it, happens it really comes down to enthusiasm i feel like you know i think if you've got an attitude where you're just so in love with something you you sort of you put that there that it's going to happen and you manifest it to some degree if you really if you really do think positively about that and right. and these kinds of opportunities will present themselves and 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 for me it was a very slow grow you know my my opportunities in my life and in my career have been very slow you know progression it was never just this yeah you know what i mean you don't you don't suddenly find yourself in a room with with kanye west making a beat for him. maybe you do but you know however it happens the the point for me at least the the, the success story for me has just been that I love music and that everything that does happen in this adventure is all great experience, you mm -hmm. know, good mm -hmm. side and the bad side of it. So I think that example is fantastic because, you know, it's like these guys were just just doing what they loved. And then, of course, they find themselves in an opportunity that that presents yeah. itself and it, it almost feels like magic in a way. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How do, how do you stay so damn creative like uh, while working on so many multiple projects? <laughs> oh man, come on, man! You, 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 you've you've worked on hundreds of. I have worked on hundreds of probably films and yeah. TV shows. It's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like for me, and, and I'm sure. I mean, it's the same thing for you, Dave. I've looked at your list. It's like the the amount of singles that you work on, the amount of records that you work on in a year. It's 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 astounding when you look at, at you know, somebody who. Um, finds a real pleasure in 
in the game of it. But I have popped into Jason's room, um, and the rumor around Fab Factory is, is Jason just lives there. Now, <laughs> I've seen his wife's Porsche, so that's not true. Um, <laughs> but but what he does do that I've seen, um, Jason's a very active guy about what he does. You know, whatever it is, he's moving around. He's got people coming through. You see stuff. There's an energy that comes, I think, from the enthusiasm. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. And, 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 and then when you see the work, you know, we saw something that, you know, special effects weren't in yet and so on and so forth. And I brought a friend of mine through to see. And you just go, man, this is craftsmanship at another level. Now, I my only addiction is Call of Duty once a year where I turn into an 11-year-old. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I'm so and I'm so childish about it. I won't play. I won't multiplayer because I don't want the young kids to cuss me out because I yeah. missed a shot. Yeah. So it's just me by myself, like a crackhead. But but what? But one of the differences is in the early days, you had certain controls over the audio you could do. Now you damn near can mix the audio if you're a player. Sure, you can move this up. You can. It's, there's so many controls, yeah. so that you can have your own audio experience with the game. It's amazing, man. Well, it's it's becoming more and more fun to do it. That's why I think it never it, it never feels tiresome or or feels like it gets old because you know it's actually a really exciting time in audio right now because what's happening mm -hmm. is sort of a you know it's almost like an exponential advancement. In, in what we can do and what we're capable of of creating, especially mm -hmm. in video games. You know, video games are are really just completely fully embracing the idea of 3D audio and and immersive experience on headphones and beyond that. And you know, we're just kind of riding on the coattails of it. You know, it's like when we did, <clears throat> you know, I've I, I've just sort of lucked out getting kind of into the video game world. It was it was by happenstance really that I ended up getting even Fortnite. And mm -hmm. from there, it's just kind of, it's progressed creatively every time, you know, there's just everyone trying to kind of push the envelope with uh, what the player can do and experience, like you're saying, you know, having control of how um, real and immersive the experience is and how fun is that, you know what I mean? And with, with film media, it's, 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 fantastic and tangible but i almost feel like video games are even more so Definitely. you know because you're you're kind of in your own environment like you said you can kind of make it and adjust it just to how you want which which a th theater isn't doing that it's it's catering to a large number of people at least you know right. 100 people or so yeah. whereas the video game you're you're very singular in your experience with it which makes it you know, uh, very much like reality in a way. And, and that's really exciting from an audio perspective because that's how I mix a lot of the time. I'm mixing by myself. I'm mixing alone. So mm -hmm. I can mix very much like the audience of a video game uh, and, in terms of how it's experienced. And as they merge, I recently, you know, whatever kind of news junkie I am, <clears throat> I watched some footage of, um, I think, Israeli, the Israeli Gaza conflict and, and just some combatants. And it looked no different than my Call of Duty game. Mm -hmm. I could tell that there wasn't a difference. It was so lifelike. Yes. And so when you, when you see where the technology is merging, where, you know, I, I recently was in Las Vegas and looked at a virtual reality screen that it's a company called View and they're partnered with the NFL. And I watched a car chase scene with Nick C Nicholas Cage mm -hmm. that was just careening around and nobody moved. We were on that, we were in front of that screen mm -hmm. and the technology mer merged it so that you think this is going on because sure. the camera is putting something together and it takes away your post and yeah. you do it in pre and it was just mind boggling. And so when I think about as guys like you then connect the audio components to that and and being <laughs> unleashed with technology it's man it's great now where is it going it's, 
and uh, I'm excited to know and see where it's going because I don't know. And I'm learning so much, you know, like I'm constantly learning from this stuff. There's so much that is changing every day about it, you know, and, and Atmos and where that's going and 360 and where that's going and the different, you know, immersive and environments that we can put music and audio in now is is really exciting. And I feel like it really is kind of boundless. There isn't really any in some ways there isn't there aren't mistakes really yeah. you know like, like miles davis said you know yeah. there, there are no mistakes you know? Yeah. and and i i think that you know to some degree that's true so it's fun and what's cool too about it is it does feel a little bit like the wild west it's like we are sort of discovering things and kind of making these things up a little bit which i think is one of the most exciting periods to be in in audio advancements is like there hasn't really been a set formula for everybody just doing it this one way I and i think I that's really exciting and fun too yeah. well, describe to me the first uh, 10 to 20 um minutes of your of your mix once you sit down uh it's a i mean because because you're known for your speed <laughs> you know i have i do have a process and um one of the things i do is uh i i don't necessarily like to get too mired down in uh the beginning of of putting things together and assembling these sessions they they, they can they can be very large sometimes yeah. um, and and have lots and lots of tracks and, and stuff gets recorded all over the world usually for a single project mm -hmm. so um i try to keep fresh with these things by having uh, a session first go to my assistant mick and he'll us, you know put this stuff together and assemble it and for me to know that that's gonna come to me the way i want it i'll usually start with it so maybe i'll take a half hour uh, uh to just sort of go over it listen to it see where this is trying to go do the first thing and then kind of give it to him to edit some things melodyne some things fix some things assemble some stuff so that when it comes to me i can spend that 20 minutes just going straight for uh a sonic idea rather than being mired down in any technical things mm -hmm. so i try and build my mixes that way where i can get straight to creative things as quickly as possible and not feel like i i get kind of burned out um and so i try and build a system where it can hit my assistant's desk first and then come to me where i could go straight into a creative idea so that's kind of generally how I try and build my pro. It doesn't always go that way, but that's kind of how I try and do it a lot of the time so that I can actually get a really cool creative idea fairly quickly within, you know, maybe not 20 minutes, but do you, you know, do you work now, a lot of, so you working on a stereo five, one or Atmos or it's, you know, it's every format, you know, I mean, we're doing, um, we're doing some projects right now in stereo, some in five, one, some in seven, one, some in seven, one, two. Uh, we just mixed the uh, Warner Brothers logo, which is no sound effects, no dialogue, all music, uh, which I recorded uh, in 914 and mixed in Atmos. So, it, and, and that was an Atmos mix. So it's every format, you know, and there's no real, uh, maybe there'll be a couple weeks where we do 5-1 channel based mixing, but it's it's kind of all over the place for me now, which is great. I love that it's what is your most indispensable tool indispensable tool what's what what's that what's that for you well, what do you think dave hmm no i think <laughs> from from dave's advice no i i think um well it really it's my listening position i think you know it's it's getting really really used to uh this environment and and where i am and being able to you know make judgments a certain way that's to me my my most i mean my speakers are a big part of that and i think that's uh you know where i start at least um you still have the same speakers yeah these are myers Meyer speakers and i have their uh asherons in the front which okay, are the, yeah. the 12 inch speaker with the horn and then yeah uh, the uh, 18 inch sub uh which is uh where i have the lfe information wow. uh on on my uh, surround mixes so mm. you know and and listening right here this is you know where i've i've gotten so you know 
fast, I guess, at, at really kind of having those judgments. I mean, in terms of like creative tools, I, the sound particle stuff is pretty awesome. I've been really getting into that stuff, you know, yeah. really great immersive tools. Oh. But yeah, I'd say my speakers and my listening position are, are really what kind of make me know where to go in terms of my second step. My first step is just listen to it. Are you a big plug-in guy? Again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I, I'm always hitting up Dave, just like, hey, Dave. <laughs> cool. what's, what's new what's <laughs> we have a few we have a few things for you which we, we'll talk about off camera so um uh I love plugins they're great oh, yeah, we, we, I'm, listen, we got... I'm in the box now i'm not you know i've got some hardware i've got some stuff like that but i don't i don't i don't have time for it anymore you know yeah 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 I don't have time for it and... how do you do you find yourself um if you're going to give advice to somebody who wants to do what you do, what, what do you tell them generally? What would you give to them? Well, I think it's, it's like you, you just have to kind of become indispensable in some way. And even if it's a small thing, because to start, you, may not, you might not be you know, the guy who's the only one who can fix a console or something like that. But even if it's like, you know, <laughs> when, when I first started out in turning, actually one of the first things I got really good at was making a latte mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. so good at it. I was better at, you know, most of the clients who I was giving them to mm -hmm. and actually was, you know, one of my first kind of like indispensable, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, techniques or whatever. And so sometimes it's like that. It's just whatever simple thing you can be good at that, that can be really useful to somebody. And, and, and then they kind of feel like, you know, if it's somebody you're trying to work with, they go, oh, that guy's pretty cool. You know, he's, he's really good at making a coffee or he's really good at, you know, show me what the, the new cool little plugins are around town or free plugins or something like that. It's mm -hmm. like little things like that, I think are really fun. It's, it's, it's what starts conversations. It's what kind of makes people feel like they want to be around you. No. And, and it's stuff you can do like like again you might not have to fix the console but you might just be the person somebody trusts to go do something and you build on that and you build on that and and you grow i think um, you know you can't you can't predict what people are going to want and like so i think if you're if you're like trying too hard it doesn't really work yeah i agree, I I agree. Think if you're if you're just kind of uh if if you're sort of uh, showing obviously that you're enthusiastic about something, but kind of looking and observing where something might be valuable to somebody and kind of, you know, honing in on that and becoming good at it. To me, those are the kinds of things that I, I, I see people notice, you know what I mean? Like if there's somebody in a studio who has, you know, a particular skill and, you know, they exploit that to some degree to, to become valuable to other people, that's kind of, I think, a, a, a Listen, in school in in film scoring and and video game music and stuff like that, being able to read music is a really valuable thing, uh, mm -hmm. at least for me, because I can read it, but I'm not that great at it. But my mm -hmm. assistants are incredible at it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something that I found really valuable when, you know, when I hired them. So well, Mick's a bad boy. No. Mick, uh, I mean Mix Mix Mick's an expert at orchestration. You know, he studied it at Berkeley and he's you mm -hmm. know He's indispensable in that regard because he he finds problems in recorded music that I would not have otherwise even noticed were issues, and he knows exactly how to edit them from other parts of the score. Mm -hmm. and bring yeah. These are insane things that are great, great yeah. to have. You know, say hello to Mick for me. I will. I will, Dave. Yeah, He's the child of the uh, <laughs> studio. Perfect example. He was an intern here at Fab Factory, and I saw how talented he was and how valuable he was, and I said. Come with me. <laughs> he made it a little hard on him, so apologize for that. <laughs> no, Max, Max on our team, same way. Um, I just grabbed him up recently, um, and and it was based on what I saw around the studio, and and their care and their enthusiasm and their you know intellect, just the way they connect with people. So it's <clears throat> how I got on. It's how we all get on. And, yeah. and um, are you? what's your what's your take on ai i mean ai has been in plugins and stuff and what we've done for a while so it's not necessarily new for us from that standpoint but ai writ large and so on and so forth yeah. do you embrace it totally i mean I, I, 
I'm also kind of not even really sure I know totally what that means in, in, in every respect, but where I see, you know, some really interesting things happening is like, uh, I don't know, like even this plugin that, that just came out, the Sonox Voca plugin, mm -hmm. that's kind of a newer plugin. It, it seems to have some of that in it where it has some really interesting I intellectual, uh, uh, way of thinking with the audio that's coming through it. Um, so I think if there's things that can actually make your job easier, uh, in ways that make you more productive, uh, and make you feel fresh with what you're doing, at, uh, technically and creatively, um, mm -hmm. then I think those kinds of things are, are to me where, where AI can really be fantastic. I think it still has to be something we use it has to be something that creators are using to help get things achieved because you know i think christopher nolan was a perfect example of what you know it goes to show you that that ai does not solve all of your problems or make right. a fantastic film it still has to be a person who makes a a fantastic piece of art you yeah. know art is yeah. something we all appreciate it isn't necessarily something that that computers uh, uh appreciate or know so I think that's, it's still, you know, you know, paramount to everything is that you have to have, you have to have a creative vision and know what it is you're trying to do and have those kinds of technologies help you in ways that make it better and maybe get it done faster or fill voids that you feel uh, are, are dragging you down and, and taking too long to do and things like that. So I, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about what, what AI can do and I, and what I've seen so far from some of the technical things it's achieving. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm a fan, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it feels to me like AI is coming along. Like a lot of the plugins come along or a lot of, uh, something new comes along down the pike for us, you know, and, uh, um, I can't wait for the future. Well, I think, you know, sound particles I mentioned before was a, it's a, a sort of a plug-in company that I think is, seems to be in, you know, uh, embracing some of that where they have these really cool technologies that allow you to take, for instance, like, a uh, 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 a kernel of a, of a crowd of people in an, in a stadium of maybe a hundred people and multiply that, uh, mm -hmm. around to to make it seem like there were a hundred thousand people in a stadium when really you only recorded a hundred and the way it, it the way it places all that and allows you to you know go through a virtual stadium and feel as if you're panning across all these individual people that are different from each other and, and have their own unique voices things like that are pretty incredible you know that you can create stuff like that create space where there isn't any or mm -hmm. create energy where there there wasn't otherwise energy um mm -hmm. i think that stuff is is pretty cool what what could be done with it i have no idea i, I haven't necessarily used uh that type of technology but uh mm -hmm. i'm excited to kind of figure out how the hell i could use it in my workflow and make it better you know Machine learning keeps me hanging around. We need to get rid of that shit so that we can get in. <laughs> Work ourselves to get into AI. Uh, uh, come on, guys. You know, you know, you know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> Everything we talked about today, it was AI. I mean, it was a uh, machine learning. I need AI to figure out how to keep my shoes perfectly polished and clean <laughs> constantly. Without getting scuffs on them. You use machine learning to get to that AI thing, then. Well, I had I had to do an intro for a, a demo show, and they wanted a lot about AI, and I was like, "Well, we could be talking about artificial intelligence or Allen Iverson. We just don't. Just depends <laughs> on. Just depends on the time of the day. Yeah. Uh, but what is not AI is Babbage box, and um um. Uh, but but it also speaks to a point about AI, which is um, there's got to be a human somewhere in the mix, you, you oh, know, yeah. just just like Dave teeing these things up. Computers can't cry, and so <laughs> that that makes what we do indispensable. To use another word from the broadcast, so Dave, Absolutely. tee up the batter's box. You, you, the, the, he is a 
he can hit switch hands. He can, he can go left and right. So yeah, bring yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let's start off with uh, lyrics. That's it, huh? Lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bjork. 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 I'd say Bjork. Ah. Major key or minor key? Major. <laughs> key. Yeah, major key. Why not? Okay, I like minor. Um. Favorite I need to say that. That's why I said major. <laughs> Your favorite tempo? Uh, I mean, 120. 120 is great. Good stuff. Groove? Uh, David Holmes. Good deal. Good one. Good one. Reverb? <laughs> yeah. Black Hole Immersive. And you got that stuff smashed all over the place. Uh, bass? Hmm. I don't know. I'd say Bootsy Collins. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> uh, so this is an outlier. Eight oh eight. Yeah. Um. A Saturn two. Melody. Uh, Pensado EQ. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 strings. Uh, Neumann M50 microphone. Well, I hate strings. Uh, stereo bus. Golfos. Wow. <laughs> uh, what piece of gear would you have on an island? Probably a Neve 1073. Neve 1073. Let me digest this. You know, yeah. Yeah. You done. You got it. You made it. You're going. <laughs> I'd probably give you completely different answers if you asked me again, but <laughs> which is good. That makes it even better. Um the future. More projects, more stuff. Um, yeah. Do you ever find yourself in a situation where um you're speaking to, you know, groups of folks or dealing with folks who want to be educated and um is that ever something you you're interested in doing i'm sure you'd be 100 absolutely okay yeah. okay because yeah. i'll be hitting you for sure well we try actually we tried it now we couldn't do it at Nam, but i know and i apologize for that no 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 no, no, no apologies necessary I, I, i'm glad we're saving it for the future we we've got good stuff coming up um love that i love you know being able to glean anything from my experiences and and have that you know be useful to other people it's it's a lot of fun i think i think Part of our obligation for those of us who've been blessed enough to carve out something that you know that people pay us for allow us to eat and continue to come back i think our, part of our obligation is to pay it forward somebody did for us it, you know we we all can point to the ones who did it for us and so i, I just feel and plus you get something out of it well, that, well Herb, you're looking at the person that did it for me you did that uh, for me Herb. No, no, don't be nice. Don't be nice. Don't be nice. That's, nice. that's, nice. My, that's my me. other ugly cousin. <laughs> <Wasn't> <laughs> me. Uh, we all did it for each other. Uh, what Dave's not telling you is when, how many times when I was down, I went to Dave, and he always, without fail, picked me up. So okay. you know, that, that's what that's what we do for each other. Uh, Jason, you're a fave. Uh, no matter what you do, it's just always good energy, always inspiring. We see each other around the shop and tip our caps and say hello. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we got we got stuff. more to come. Uh, it's great at Fab Factory. So proud of you, man! It's amazing the work you do. Thanks, yeah. thank yeah. you, Dave. thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. You guys Absolutely. are amazing. Hey, you guys are amazing! Love your show. We're hanging in there, baby. Um, his name is Jason LaRocco. The other guy is Dave Pensado. Hope you had a good time, and we'll see you next week.